Hello and welcome to this webinar on international relocation, brought to you by Oliver James Associates. Our presenters today are Victoria Heathcote and Judita Massoni, who will be talking you through the ins and outs of relocating overseas. Victoria has been with Oliver James for almost 15 years and has recently earned a promotion to director. She works from our Manchester office dealing with clients that, that have an international presence, which makes her well equipped to talk about today's topic. Judita acts as Associate Director of our Milan office with a tenure of four years. She has a wealth of experience supporting international candidates, sourcing roles and helping candidates prepare for a life in Italy. I'm Megan Walsh and I'm joined by Matt Gale. We'll be hosting and facilitating this webinar. Today we'll answer four questions. Why should you consider relocation? What can international relocation do for your career? How can you benefit from an overseas position? And is international relocation family friendly? There will be an allocated Q&A at the end of the session, but feel free to use the chat tool at any point to submit your questions or to tell us about any technical problems you may experience during this recording. For now though, let's begin our webinar. Victoria, you'll be kicking off things talking about relocation for a, from a commercial and career perspective. So if you'd like to start, we'll hand things over to you. Hi, this is Victoria Heathcote from Oliver James Associates in the UK. Um, I think it's fair to say that everybody wants uh, candidates with UK risk and regulatory experience. Um, it's widely acknowledged that the UK leads the way in terms of financial services regulatory bodies and the rest of the world looks to both the PRA and the FCA to set the standard for other regulatory bodies to mirror. Um, due to this, um, candidates have uh, who have been through the past 10 years of heightened regulatory change, development and control can in fact command a premium in the international market uh, for the experience that they've gained. Um, if we take ex uh, Australia as a prime example, I've recently been doing a lot of work for a client of mine in Australia um, and last year Australia had a Royal Commission um, into banking misconduct which essentially highlighted the lack of regulatory intervention by government authorities. Um, on the back of this, there has been a huge upturn in demand for risk and regulatory professionals in both Sydney and Melbourne. However, the market for domicile talent is very tight and there, and there has been simply not enough people um, locally to um, service the demand. Due to this, uh, we found international organisations are now actively seeking to relocate UK nationals to Australia uh, to take advantage of their experienced, uh, experience in a highly regulated marketplace. And you speak a lot about Australia, but does, does the need for UK talent extend to the likes of Asia and the US? Absolutely it does. Um, as most overseas regulators mirror UK regulation, um, it's relatively easy for UK experts to use their skills globally, um, set, going and setting uh, sort of like best practice um, standards within um, global organisations. Um, it's very easy for people who've got that experience to, to move um, internationally and, and take advantage of the experience that they've gained. Okay. And um, what can international relocation do for your career? Well, these days the, the, the world is a much, much smaller place uh, and there are a significant number of truly global institutions that can offer candidates a, a challenging, diverse and re rewarding career on, on a very much a global scale. Um, it's entirely feasible uh, to spend your career working across a number of different jurisdictions from North America, Asia, Europe and Oceania are all well within reach. Um, these places are offering fully supported relocation packages including spouses and children um, so they can attract the very best talent in the marketplace. In short this means that you're one getting paid to travel um, and generally uh, you're traveling and staying in very nice hotels and and so forth on an international basis. Um, personal development and opportunity go beyond, to, to go beyond your comfort zone and challenge yourself both professionally and personally. Expand your network and, and gain new skills, um, experiences uh, that add to your career uh, potential uh, in the long term and in, also in the medium term as well. Uh, and in, in immerse yourself in another culture and have the opportunity to, to learn new languages uh, and new ways of life. Um, I think 
primarily one of the main reasons people look to relocate as well is to take advantage of lower tax rates, cheaper property prices and cheaper costs of living with indeed higher standards of living um, often on the back of that. Um, and finally, I have to say that, you know, for people who are up for the challenge to move overseas, um, it's often those individuals that are up for the challenge that are given the opportunity to take those um, to take those challenges on. OK, um, Victoria, so it, it's Matt here. Um, so what if you're not working for a global company? Does this make it harder to emigrate or is having the skills enough to get you where you want to be? Certainly it can be. Um, if you're not already working for a global organisation, um, it's a case of thinking about where you want to go globally and looking at that marketplace and seeing if your skills are viable in that marketplace. So if I go to, back to my example of Australia, um, you know, there there's a huge amount going on there with regards to banking misconduct. Um, so if you say have been working for um, a banking institution or working at a regulator or indeed working at a consultancy business and you've had exposure to banking conduct issues, whether that be retail or wholesale, um, the likelihood is that overseas organisations are going to want to talk to you. Okay, so if you wanted to get ahead of your game in an oversaturated UK market, is relocation the answer? It can be, certainly. Um, the the marketplace in risk and regulation is very very well established in the uk um and i wouldn't necessarily say that it's an oversaturated market but um it is a very well serviced market whereas um if you look at other jurisdictions um and um and you know move different to different continents and so forth there is simply not um the the domicile um talent pool there so you know you are um already going to a, a marketplace that can see you um move up the ladder quite quickly i think and say if you you're not a free agent can you still relocate absolutely you can um you know that that's not an issue at all so with the netherlands australia switzerland new zealand and canada all in the top 10 places um to raise a family and all have huge financial services hubs um, the standard of living in these countries is superb um, with high standards of housing education and healthcare. care um, children educated overseas um, often have a second and sometimes a third language um, and all of these countries uh, where there is a strong professional population have international schools that can offer a choice of curriculum um, to uh, to families um, you will find it you know that they also have very well established expat communities in these cities that can offer both French and support on a long term basis. All of my the clients that I deal with um, when they're relocating people offer um, relocation for families um, and work permit sponsorship and so forth. Um, so they're looking to relocate people in the long term and not just people that want to spend a couple of years in, a, in an area and then move on. Okay, it's good that you mentioned the impact relocation can have on the family, because this brings us on to Judita, who'll be touching us on who'll be touching on relocation from a more cultural perspective. Judita, over to you. Hi Megan, thank you very much, and uh, hi everyone. This is Judita Massone from the Milan office from uh, Italy at Oliver James. So, um, of course, candidates who move abroad have the chance to live in a different place becoming familiar with a new culture and learning an additional language. Moving for a job helps you settling down easier in the new place as you can benefit from the work environment to develop also a personal network. From our experience, companies are often facilitating this process, organizing networking events in order to grant the best introduction of the new international employees to the local and the expat communities. In a global world, uh, countries should not represent a boundary, instead an opportunity. It is also very easy to travel and come back home to your country when needed. In addition, I say that most of the employers are now providing smart working to allow you to work easier from everywhere. Also, moving internationally gives you much more chances to find the best job for you. This is related to two reasons. The first one, 
if you are open to consider international moves, you have a greater number of opportunities you can take into consideration, allowing yourself to really find the best job and company for you. The second highlight is that international work experiences differentiate yourself from colleagues with similar technical competencies, making your professional profile even more appealing. In fact, candidates who move abroad develop an international mindset, being able to work in complex organizations and interact with colleagues of different cultures. In a global world where companies are often asked to interact with international stakeholders, having this kind of skills uh, gives you a huge competitive advantage and career boost for course. Finally, people who show the courage to take such a big challenge, like moving abroad, are intrinsically demonstrating to be very much motivated and passionate about their job, which adds a further golden point to your professional profile. And you mentioned that it can be a big challenge. What would you say is the most common challenge that, that candidates face on their big move? Well, uh, the most common challenge, I think, is to adopt to the new culture and develop a personal network as well. I'm not saying it's everything always easy when you move abroad, but if you have the right approach and passion, after a few months, you will find yourself settled and naturally blended into the new culture. I've done it myself, actually, when I moved to the UK from Italy, when I firstly joined Oliver James, and now I can say you that it was the best choice of my life. Okay, great. And is international relocation family friendly? Well, uh, moving abroad is an opportunity not just for the candidate, but also for his or her family. Companies which are hiring international candidates are usually supporting the relocation with housing and travel allowances, international schools for the children and other benefits to facilitate the move. We can safely say that international relocation is definitely family friendly. The candidate's kids can benefit a lot from it as spending a few years abroad allow them to pick up a new language and international mindset from an early age. All these skills will be increasingly important in the future years and will allow them to easier be the next generation international candidates. Oliver James, as an international recruitment company, is used to support candidates in, in international relocations. We help finding the best place to live, best schools, and negotiate all the company benefits to grant you the best experience. In many of my international candidates' relocation, we also gave advice and support to the spouse to find a job in the, in the new country. And do you have any examples of these candidates and how we have helped them? Well, yes, I have uh, many examples as I helped uh, supporting many candidates with international relocation. Um, one perhaps that comes into my mind is about this candidate. It was a senior actually, originally from Romania, but uh, he had been living in London since university with uh, his wife and now with two, two children as well, working as a life modeling actuary. I got in touch with him through our international OJA network as he, he was always in contact, uh, already sorry, in contact with a colleague of mine in Manchester. He was a perfect candidate for a very niche role for a major Italian insurance company. The role in question was actually extremely attractive and after understanding the motivations of the candidate, I knew he would be very much keen to develop his career in this role. The candidate uh, was very keen to go, as well as uh, his wife. Uh, the, the main issue, let's say, were the, the children, uh, which were a little bit less enthusiastic to leave London and their friends behind. So I had this candidate uh, organizing a travel to Italy and to Trieste uh, with the family as well. They went to the seaside and uh, uh, after seeing the beauty of Italy and um, the places, the location, also the kids then uh, were very happy to go. Uh, I kept in close with this candidate and uh, I'm still um, very much in touch with, uh, with him. 
uh, I assisted him in his search for a new home, putting him in contact with uh, some relevant uh, housing agents. Of course, relocating, as I said before, is not very easy, um, especially when you have children, you have a wife, and you have to perhaps look for a new job also for your wife. But uh, um, if you are really much willing to go and passionate about the opportunity you have, then at the end, you will find yourself uh, very happy. And this is the, the experience also of this person. Okay, and how long can the process take from getting the job to starting the job? Well, uh, of course, talking about an international relocation, uh, it may take a little bit more than um, the local relocation, the, the local move. Uh, usually companies give uh, candidates more time to allow them to manage the move with more peace of mind. On average, I say that since the start of the selection process to the actual starting date, it could take around three months or so. But again, it really depends on the flexibility of the candidates and the company and the employer as well. Okay, and then if you decide that international relocation isn't for you, is it easy to find a job back in the UK or in this instance, Romania? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you gave it a try, and uh, uh, if you think that then it's not something for you, you can always come back, but uh, um, anyway, you come back different from how you, you, you arrived. You have a better professional background, and uh, also you have uh, a much more appealing professional profile also for your home country. Perfect. Thanks, Judita. It's uh, it's Matt here again. Um, yeah. I'd like to thank you both, Judita and Victoria, for running through your points here. What we'd like to touch on now is um, the expertise that Oliver James can can use these in, in these instances and support candidates who are looking to embark on this journey of relocation. Um, so I'd like to cover off a couple of things. First of all, um, for anyone listening now who's maybe considering relocation, is looking at the pros and cons about it. Um, why should they consider reaching out to the team at Oliver James, if I could ask you about Victoria? Well, we are um, a truly international um, uh, recruitment business at Oliver James Associates with um, our based in, in the UK. We have um, international offices across Europe, Asia and America. Um, and many of the individuals in those offices have relocated themselves um, so they can give first hand, including Judita, um, they can give first hand um, advice and experience on how to, to go about doing that. And, um, you know, we have knowledge of um, work permits and, and the legal requirements. Um, I'm currently um, dealing with um, an individual that I am relocating um, and I'm assisting that individual uh, who has um, two children of schooling age with um, finding schools for the children um, and also on practical notes such as um, housing and so forth. We've been able to help and advise on that as well. So it's not a case of you sign the contract and Oliver James walk away. We give an ongoing professional and personal touch to to helping people relocate and presumably this goes beyond the actual placement itself um, yeah, absolutely in relationship absolutely absolutely we do um you know it's it's i i'm dealing with another individual at the moment who i've known for many many years uh, and i'm in the process of relocating um him to australia he has three children um one of whom um is at university so there's been lots and lots of discussion about um, the practicalities of how that's going to happen and um, and you know the ongoing support and trust that we have with our candidates um, goes beyond a transactional um, relationship. Thanks Victoria. Um, I'd like to pose a similar question over to you Judita. Um, so from your perspective um, what kind of service and relationship can a candidate expect who's looking to embark on this like admittedly unique um, career progression milestone? 
Mm -hmm. Yes, well, we are keen to provide our candidates uh, the an excellent level of service. So we are aware that moving internationally is not easy at all. So we want to support the, this process during all the phases from the, the selection to the decision to actually move. Um, we sometimes we get in touch also with, with the family to, to understand one, what what are their um, their doubts about it so we can perhaps add them and of course uh, we support um, negotiating all the benefits and the best package with the, the new employer we support with the, the uh, looking for the, the the house the the location and uh, develop perhaps a personal network we uh, are, of course, uh, su supporting many candidates in the relocation, international relocation. So uh, what we, we do as well is putting these people in contact once they are in the same country so that they can develop a community, an expat community. Perfect. Thank you, Judita. Um, to all participants, um, we're happy to receive um, any questions equally. Um, towards the end of this um, session, we'll be displaying the, um, the email address that you can contact us on. Um, but there is one particular question which I'd like to, to pose to Victoria at this point. Um, it's in regards to overseas opportunities, do they tend to be seen as, an, as a secondment or do they tend to be more of a permanent solution? I think it depends on the individual, to be perfectly honest. Um, you know, long gone are the days where people have one job and stay within that job for the rest of their lives. Um, and many, many um, people these days, especially if they are single or don't have children, will maybe want to experience working overseas for a few years uh, before coming back to the UK to settle down. Um, but on the flip side of that, I have, um, I'm dealing with an individual at the moment who is moving overseas and you know, he's moving to the other side of the world and taking his children with him. And his children are 100% on board with that move. Um, they actually asked, can we move to Australia? Um, you know, because they wanted that that lifestyle, that outdoors lifestyle. So I think it's dependent purely on, on the individual. And if you're working for an international company and you are valued within that organization, um, nine times out of ten they will relocate you back to the UK because they will want to keep you yeah. um, and it may be that you don't want to come back to the UK but you may want to go to a different um, area you want to move to, may want to move to Asia or America and of course that is completely possible within these organizations okay so it's very much down to the individual situation absolutely huh? yeah there is no expectation that that someone will spend the rest of their career with with an organization if they're being moved out there Fantastic. Um, thank you, Victoria. And if there are no questions from the participants, then that will conclude today's webinar. Thank you to Victoria and Judita, and thank you for joining us today. If you have any further questions during the session, we'll contact you direct, directly with an answer. Just email us at marketing at ojsolutions.com. In the next 24 hours, keep an eye on your, on your inbox for an e email containing a direct no, sorry everyone, containing a di direct link to today's recording. And please be sure to fill out our short feedback survey, which will be included in the email. Thanks again for tuning in.